Welcome everyone to episode 9. Um, before we begin, let me show you this little program that I made. Uh, uh, I can choose an episode number, like 9, and then here it helps me, like, you know, write something out so I can say, like, <laughs> uh, Tetris or something like that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, cause it started taking a while for me to print those out. And by the way, another small note before I begin, um, I am actually recording, um, a lot of these episodes recently, um, actually on the same day, like it's actually, um, I think it's this, the 15th today, um, September 15th. So I'm actually scheduling YouTube to release my episodes at noon. That way, you know, I can be ahead of my episodes and I know that they're just consistently released. And that way I can work ahead and try to get ahead. And that way there's no, you know, there's not like clumping of episodes and then suddenly there's like a scarcity of episodes. That way they just, they're always steady. And also I can get ahead and just kind of program when I feel like it. And sometimes I like to just program a lot at once, but then other times... I might be really busy, you know, with school, but if my week is covered, you know, I'll be able to just focus on studying and not worry about having to um, program too much because pretty much the week is covered. Um, but I did want to make another program because I, I kind of didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep uh, going. And um, um, I want to make a, um, a lights out. Uh, let's see if light out. There we go, light out. We'll just go with that name. Um, basically, I don't know theoretically if you can just start with any random number of on and off bits and then let's say you hit a square. Um, let, let's say you have a grid of on and off um, squares. The way lights out works, and I'm not sure why my... I want to keep my... Uh, um, my camera keeps getting out of focus for some reason. But anyway, the way lights out works pretty much is there's... there's basically a grid of on and off um, ones and zeros across the screen. Um, and there's two ways I could possibly implement this. I could either make it wrap the screen, where if you, you change this one, um, it'll affect the side on the opposite side, or I could make it where it just affects the ones around it. But anyway, the way the game works is if you change one light, it changes that light, but also the lights around it. Um, but then, like, the goal is to get all the lights out. And I'm not sure if there's like, um, if there's this, the set of beginning states that you can have is equal to the set of all possible states, which means I'm not sure if there's a solution to every way you could possibly um, start the game if you just chose randomly on and off. But I, I do know that if I write an algorithm that just starts with all the lights out and then basically just randomly selects lights to change, to toggle, then eventually you'll get to some mixed state that is guaranteed to be solvable. Um, and there's no way to make it unsolvable from there because you've only toggled ways in which you can, basically you can reverse. So it's basically guaranteed to be in a solvable state. I don't know if th there's such thing as an unsolvable state for lights out. I haven't really researched it. Too much and I haven't thought about it too much um, so you can obviously you can comment or whatever if you know if that's possible or not if there's unsolvable states or not but right now um, I just want to make the the actual engine of it at least if we don't if we don't make the actual like a full game with like an intro and a win state and stuff like that then it's no big deal but let's at least try to make like an engine um, that we can just mess around with. So we'll start off clearing the screen and then 
we'll make a, um, a matrix. Um, let's make it, um, I don't know how big. We could make it a 16 by 8. I'm not sure if I should, though, um, because that is kind of big. Um, but we could do it the same way we basically that we did the Zelda one. So we could have like six across and four down. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll do it Y then X and we'll store it into matrix A. Um, and then we'll, let's go ahead and fill zeros into matrix A. Uh, that way we start off with them all off and we'll just say one is on. Um, and then we'll have coordinates for where our cursor is. So uh, one stores X and one stores Y. So I wanted to find all the coordinates based off the lights, not off the screen. And then we'll just output things to the screen, you know, accordingly. So, um, yeah, so that might take a little bit of programming, but it'll make things easier, I think because then we'll be able to focus more on the game rather than the GUI. Um, so let's do a for loop. Um, so for A is one, two, four. And let's do another loop. For B is one, two, six. And now, Let's output um, based on um, what we have in the matrix, uh, which is zeros, of course. Um, so let's just let's just output zeros for now. Or, um, or it, do, it doesn't really matter, but. Um, I guess. What's a way to what's a way to output a B I'm sorry, A is the vertical one. So A plus we'll do one plus A minus one times two. And then one plus B minus one times two, zero. Uh, let me see if that, um, oh right, we have to store this into dimensions of matrix A. There we go, okay. Um, so they're separated pretty well. Um, you know what? Let's do the cursor on the like the right and the bottom sides of it. So we can actually make this wider uh, by I think like by like two or something. Because that way we can use the corner of the screen, which might be a better idea for now at least. So let's would it be eight? Or is that, is that too much? I guess that works. Yeah, yeah, eight, because it's half of 16. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's edit lights out. And let's output based off where we are. So why? Um, minus one times two. Um, so we're gonna add two to that and then add two to x minus one times two. Um, 
actually, I think we can just say 2x because that's literally the same thing. So 2x and 2y. Um, yeah, well, for just for now, uh, we'll we'll just put it like an O because we're just marking the corner. We're not even marking the sides. So yeah, that's where we start. And we can we can edit what that looks like later. We can you know output to the sides or anything. But right now, it's probably easiest just to make it um, simple. Um, but I guess you know it doesn't hurt to. I guess we can make it look like it wraps it a little bit. That might be. Um, that might actually look a little better. So, on the bottom of it, we can put. Let's see. I guess a minus. And then on the right of it, we can put either like an I or. Uh, let's see, what kind of characters can we mess around with? Um, I can put a V under it or something. Whoa, that's... not... what I was necessarily looking for. Is it just... oops. One plus. Um... I guess minus one <laughs> is what I really meant to do. Yeah. Yeah, so. So this would be the right side, actually. So I could do that, and then I could do something like U. Not sure, but anyway. Um, it looks fine. Um, but we're not worried about that too much. Let's go ahead and make it so that uh, if we if we enter a number, so we're gonna do get key, uh, store it as a. Um, and then let's go ahead and output or let's go ahead and check if we're moving at all so if a equals 26 if a equals 24 if a equals 25 a equals 34 um, this plus one stores x x minus 1 stores x, y minus 1 stores y, y, oops, y plus 1 stores y, uh, so here, anyway, um, we need to put a loop before I can move, I don't, I was trying to move there, but there, we don't even have a loop, so, we can't even move once if we wanted to. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Let's do like an infinite loop here, and uh, we can go ahead and move around. We don't have deleting yet, so let's let's add that in. Um, Let's use T and S as normal. Um, okay. If Y does not equal, oops, does not equal T or X does not equal S. 
then we'll output uh, the same thing here except in terms of T and S and um, spaces of course Okay, so T2, comma, um, S2 minus 1, comma, space. Okay, so this should be an S actually. Okay. Okay, and then here we can store the old coordinates. So x and y can be stored as s and t. So let's go ahead and see if we can move. Yep, we can move and it erases our old self without destroying anything else on the screen, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, now I want to make it so that if we hit 21, if we hit this, the blue button, so if a equals 21, then here's where the complicated stuff gets in. Um, now we have our x and y is needs to switch what's in the matrix. Um, so basically we need to um, we be, basically we can we can reverse what's in the matrix by saying not uh, matrix a y x store as matrix a uh, y x and what that'll do is that'll that'll switch. Um, we can store this into like something like B and then we can we can store B into there but we can also output it um, we can also output B now how did we actually output the variables it's 1 plus the variable minus 1 times 2. So we can do 1 plus um, y minus 1 times 2, 1 plus x minus 1 times 2, and then we can output b, because b is either going to be 1 or 0. So if I if I press the second, good, it changed it to one. Good. So whenever I go around, I can press the blue key and I'll change uh, the one to a zero and the zero to a one. Okay. And, but I also want to do the ones around it. Uh, so this is where it gets tricky because this is where we decide whether we're going to do borders or whether we're going to wrap the screen um, and I'm wondering if we should make that like an option like I'm wondering if I should build into the code you know the option to to actually wrap the screen if you want with the lights or not so there would be two different ways the gameplay would actually go through um, which would be an interesting uh, change because the puzzle might the puzzle would actually be different uh, the logic of the actual puzzle um, for a given start state at least it would be different I don't know if in general that would change you know whether the fact uh, you would have unsolvable unsolvable puzzles depending on how you initialize it or not but yeah that would be an interesting um, option uh, let's do it with borders first so um, so we'll say if x minus 1 
is uh, greater than zero, then we'll do we'll do it we'll do that. So and then if x plus one is um, less than or equal to sixteen, uh, we'll do greater than or equal to one because that's we're gonna make everything follow suit in its um, intuition. So if y minus one is greater than or equal to one, and then if y minus or plus one is less than or equal to eight. And so for these four conditions, I'm gonna have a then and an end because they're gonna involve um, Basically, they're going to involve more than one line. They're going to involve switching the matrix, just like we did up here. So, right here, it's x minus, you know, minus one. So, um, yeah, we're we're going to have to basically copy these three lines of code for all four of these cases. So I'm going to need to put a not in each of these, and a not matrix A, um, Y, X minus 1, stores B, um, B stores matrix A, Y, X minus 1, and then output Uh, y minus uh, 1 plus y minus 1 times 2 and then 1 plus oops x minus 2 times 2 and then uh, here we'll output b and so that's just so so I just did one of these but let's see if the guy to our left changes is with us. Okay, good. So if I do it here, it shouldn't freeze or anything. It just doesn't change anything. But here, it, you know, everywhere else it does. It changes the guy to our left, not just us. Um, so I'm going to go back down here, and I'm just going to complete the same thing for all of these. Um, so... Here's where programming gets a little repetitive, um, but it's not too bad. Because the nice thing about programming is, once something gets a little too repetitive, usually there's a, a way to make it not repetitive again uh, by using more programming. So, not a uh, y x plus 1 uh, store into b and then b stores into a y x plus 1 and we output 1 plus y minus 1 times 2 1 plus x plus 1, oop, not x plus 1, it's just x times 2, um, b, and then for here, we do pretty much the same thing, except with the y's, so a of y minus 1, stars b, B stores matrix A. Uh, actually, this is not. Oops. B stores Y minus 1 X. Output 1 plus Y minus 2 times 2 x 1 plus x minus 1 times 2 
copy. And for our final case, not a times y plus 1 x stores b, b stores matrix a y plus 1 x and output 1 plus y times 2 1 plus x minus 1 times 2 b okay so when I move around oh syntax error Oh, I have two left parentheses. Okay, now let's try it. Bam, all four. Bam, all four, nice. All four, nice, nice, and nice. So now, no matter what, I know the starting state that I start in was all zeros. Uh, so I know for a fact that I'll be able to win. See, I won. Um, what I don't know, what I do know is I, I know how to make an algorithm that will mix this that we will win no matter what. What I don't know is if I, re I need to use that algorithm or if I can just randomly select ones and zeros to start off with and still be able to win. That's what I don't know. Um, and I don't know, I also don't know if that depends on us being on the edge or not. Um, I'm not sure of that. I will have to look that up or try to figure it out. It's there's probably some more abstract math involved in uh, determining whether that's true or not. I'm sure there's something on Wikipedia about it. I have not checked. Um, but yeah, we pretty much, we programmed lights out, the engine of it. Um, um, what I could do is, I, I'm wondering if I should, should mix it. And we might be able to mix it actually while we're watching. Um, because what we could do is we could put a loop. Um, Um, what we could do is we could put a loop inside of here um, that or we could put a go to basically we could take this segment of code right here um, and we could if we could separate it so that we could actually use it um, separately from from the game, like either make another program or make some kind of like way to use this this segment of code. Um, then we could we could go up to the top of the program and then we could just kind of like mix it. Um, um, but I'm not sure. Well. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I could do that, I suppose. Um, I'm going to try using a label. Uh, see, I have label A. So, right here. Um, and what I can do is I can come down here and um, basically I think there's a way to like hack a make this into a subroutine without actually having to make our own program um, and I think the way to do that 
is basically it's going to reach basically this program is going to reach an end down there but we can trick the, the program to think that the end is a different end like it's not going to the infinite loop but it's going to an end which we started a loop before we went to this label because I know the way that this the calculator runs its programs is it actually can you can use the a same end for two different uses and I know that because you can skip around the code using go to's and I've done that before um, so what we could do is after we output it all zeros basically right here um, we could do a loop um, for uh, we can do c is negative one to zero and then if if c so if c is negative one then we'll we'll go to a but if it's not then we'll um, we'll just continue going so what will happen is we'll reach this line of code c will get set to negative one so it thinks it's in a for loop then It'll check if C is anything but zero here, which it is. So it will go to A. And then it will come down here and go to this label that we made called A. Um, right here. And then it will execute all this code underneath. And then it, when it reaches an extra end down here, uh, towards the bottom, it'll think... Um, it'll think, you know what, There's uh, we reached the end of our for loop that's what it'll think so it'll actually automatically come straight back to where we made this for loop right here and then it will increment c to zero and then when c is not negative one anymore at zero then it won't do this statement right here so it'll just keep going as if really nothing ever happened um, so I'm gonna try to oh there we go we switched it okay so um, What's nice is um, <clears throat> I can I can select a random number, so I can select a random integer from one to eight, and from one to four, and store this as my x and my y, and then it'll randomly select one to change. So, uh oh. That's not good. If not a y x plus one. Oh, if x is less than or equal not to sixteen but to eight. That's right. I messed that up. So the y needs to be less than or equal to four. Okay. So now it'll randomly change one. See. So every time I run this one gets randomly switched so I can go back into my program and instead of instead of just running that once um, I could actually run it I could make this like negative like 15 okay now when I run this it'll randomly switch for me and I get to watch it randomly switch and then I start in a random spot so you know what that actually worked out really well um, and this is actually this is really this is really cool. Um, so we can select we can select a difficulty. Um, so so I can prompt I can prompt D and D will be our difficulty. So D will be how far we mix it. So we can put negative D here. And there we go. Now when we play the game, we can we can get a, this is like a difficulty level. The higher the number, the more it's mixed. So if we just put one, all we have to do is just hit it there. And we're done. Um, 
Now, D will not be the minimum number of moves to solve it necessarily, because once you, let's say we pick like 2,000, we might be able to solve that in less than 2,000 moves, uh, because some of the moves might like cancel each other out, you know, in different ways. But, um, and actually, come to think of it, um, about the theory behind this game, I could be wrong, but I'm I'm starting to wonder from my memory if the solution to the game is all is less than the number of squares on the screen. I think you might be able to actually hit each square only once. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I believe I believe that's theoretically correct. I believe that you you can solve the game just by hitting one, and I don't think it matters whether you wrap the screen. So actually, and, and I don't know if that actually proves whether a game is solvable or not. Uh, I don't know that yet, but I am starting to think that the solution uh, will be, will always, the, the optimal solution will always be less than the number of squares on the screen. I believe that that is correct. But anyway, we can set whatever um, difficulty we want. There's 10, and this works really well. So we made a really awesome Lights Out game. Um, I'm going to have to end the episode now. I actually don't even have a choice now because my battery is almost dead. But um, this was an awesome episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm very satisfied with this because we didn't really get stuck for too long, and we made a nice game that actually works. Uh, we didn't complete the game to test, you know, whether you won or not, but that's a really easy, uh, that's a really easy addition. So we can actually work on this later on. Um, remind me to post a link um, f to a future episode if I ever, like, complete this or add more to it, like, checking if you won. That way, you know, for anyone... in in the future watching this episode, they'll know exactly where to click uh, to go and watch me, you know, add more to this or to complete it. But um, that's all we have for today, and that's episode 9. And thank you for watching. Um, me, thanks for watching me program.